Okay, good morning, Beverly Jane Stewart. How are you? Hi, how are you, Yoni? Thank God, very well. It's wonderful to good. see you, and it's Thank particularly you. lovely to see you at your art studio. Thank yeah, you so I'm much. Very for lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this morning we are interviewing Beverly Jane Stewart, the wife of our chairman, Andrew Mates, a very renowned, accomplished, uh, award winning artist. So I'm delighted that you found some time to, to uh, put down the paintbrush and pick up the microphone to share with us some insights. Um, first of all, Beverly, if you would just tell me a little bit about your background and how you um, got involved, first of all, when you became a member of St. John's with Synagogue, and um, how you got involved in artistry altogether in the beginning. Well, um, I was born in South London. I was born by Clapham Common. I had a very anglicised upbringing. And I went to a school, my secondary school, I was the only Jewish girl there. But the synagogue became a very important thing because once a week I met Jewish people. That was a place where I could identify with being Jewish. And Judaism was important in our home. We liked the candles, we kept Friday night. And then I met people in the synagogue. And I became very interested in communities. So in my education, I became a teacher. I qualified with an art degree at Wimbledon College. And then I taught in very difficult areas of London, Brixton, Camberwell, with children often with disturbed uh, personalities. And I became very interested in the social effect on the psychology of children. So when I had a problematic child, it'd be dealing with the health visitor, the police, social workers, other teachers, parents, in order to try and stabilize that child. And working with grassroots communities made me understand about how people's communities developed. Now, when I, my synagogue closed because it was in Brixton, I didn't live in Brixton, but I went to that synagogue because of the riots at the time, I felt it was a real loss. I just wanted to capture that atmosphere of me sitting upstairs with my mum in my seat and how I perceived it and that really took an interest. Now my early artwork was about London lifestyles and then I moved into Jewish lifestyles through the synagogue. So when I came to St John's Wood, which I have been a member now for 38 years, my picture of St John's Wood synagogue was again one of my early ones taken upstairs um, I was very interested in, in the light that came through the stained glass windows. I was interested in the panoramic view that we have for women in the service. And also, reason again to connect. I wasn't a Northwest Londoner. My husband came from Yorkshire. I didn't know many people in the area. And I wanted my children to be brought up with knowing their neighbours, their Jewish neighbours. So they went to Haida and they made friends. And that community to me was very very important and then I started looking at synagogues and what the story was behind the synagogue. I must say I love your collection particularly of the synagogue uh, photography as um, art and I'd like to share with everybody from so they can see at home the, the painting that you were referring to um, so I don't know if, if you can see this on your screen now if you can see that on your screen th this is the painting that Beverly's referring to of St John's Wood Synagogue and I think people We'll probably be feeling a little bit nostalgic looking at this painting right now because we haven't been in our synagogue for, for a month. Um, but next time, if you could paint it from the other angle so you could see my seat, that would be appreciated. Uh, yeah. but it's a fantastic painting, Beverly, and, and thank you so much for thank you. Thank you. sharing that with, with, with the synagogue. I think there's a copy of it up in the synagogue as well. Yes, um, there is. Yeah, and I think it's on the Yolt site book as well. It's, it's uh, the names of the Yolt site, they put that picture on, and I think they've got. Um, Grace After Mills book as well, ventures and things. Yes. So it has been used quite a lot because people have liked it. Tell me something, um, Beverly. What, what are you busy with now? What project are you working on at the moment? Well, my life has changed a lot since doing British synagogues. I'm now with one of the top creators in Israel, and I'll come later on to tell you how that developed. Um, and I've become totally international because what has happened is Europe, with the breakdown of communism, with the input of EU money and the fact that people can get into knowing their roots. So 
So genealogy has become in the forefront, particularly Jewish genealogy. So in the Holocaust, lots of things were destroyed and people are looking for their roots. And cemeteries are being restored, synagogues are being restored and Jewish museums are being established. Now, my synagogue work originally was just the building and then I was interested in outside the building and then looking at a synagogue on what was the purpose of that synagogue in that community. And linking that now with Europe, I'm showing the story of the Jews within different towns. So I call myself a visual writer. I tell these stories visually. And people don't realize pre-Holocaust how much the Jews contributed to the towns. They established um, trades, they were involved commercially, in some cases professionally. People were proud to be uh, identified with their country beside being Jewish. And then that was taken away. And what I wanted to do was, I wanted people to remember the Jews in a good way, not the destruction, but to remember what they left. Yes. And it's through the synagogues you learn so much. It's actually very because, interesting you say this because when we do um, Jewish heritage trips to Poland and, and, and Eastern mm. Europe, we try and recreate what life was like before the Holocaust, the vibrancy yes. and the energy and the beauty. And there are some yes. stunning synagogues that unfortunately a lot of them are no longer there, but there were there. So that's very important to recreate that. Yeah, I mean, a synagogue within itself, let me take you, give you an example. First, we often see uh, some of them are very wealthy and you see that they put a lot of money and time into their synagogue, which meant psychologically, they felt they were there to stay. They were part of that community, to spend that money and connect and make it something special. Also, if you look at the architecture, it's also often linked with either other religious architectures or the architecture within the area. Sure. So people felt they belonged. They contributed. They contributed through the shops. You can see shops and, and, and sometimes little ghettos where the Jews lived. And if you compare it to the time, it was similar to what other people were living. So I wanted people to know that Jews weren't isolated. They felt very connected. And the destruction of the Holocaust was a terrible thing. And then I move it into modernity. And what have we still got left? And you still see traces of Jewish life, even though the Jews aren't there anymore. So the synagogues is one of them. Uh, a lot of the streets you see where all the shops were were once Jewish owned, and those streets and shops are still there, even if they're not owned by them. Sure. And you see the patterns of the architecture, architecture in the actual synagogue. Sure. So it's um, remembering those Jews in a positive way, moving forward. Beverly, I want to ask you something else. Um, so, as an artist, perhaps you're, you're quite used to self-isolating, being there in your studio with just your paintbrush for company. Mm. There are many people right now who are self-isolating at home, many of whom perhaps have an interest in art and would like to get involved and uh, tap into their own creative talents. Um, I personally love art. In fact, I've got a sketch that was part of, my, of me. Would you recognize this? This is a sketch. Oh, wow, that's amazing. This was done by Ruth Schreiber, um, and she did the sketch of me going back. Um, how would you recommend for art enthusiasts to get involved? Perhaps this is a great time, they're stuck at home anyway. What could they do? Correct. Well, I think we're very lucky in this day and age because we have the internet. I mean, the internet is so international. You can Google anything on that internet. You can get downloads of... Uh, how to get lessons on the internet. If you have a subject matter you're interested, you can put that into your system and that will give you all the information. I often take photographs from the internet onto my camera so they're right, on, on, right in front of me so I can work directly. You can play with that imagery, you can get into art lessons. There's an amazing thing for this opportunity. thing that I found that's quite interesting in modern day life is to play with your media so it's not just that you're going to draw or you're just going to paint but you could think of that on what material you're going to draw it on or whether you could add something onto that surface i've been working with plaster and cement and perspex right. so you know 
play with it, let it go. But start with the Googling of what you're interested in and build up from there. Cool. Great suggestions. I know Dina is very much trying to get the kids involved in art. They've been doing lots of stuff in the garden, uh, creative Hi. projects. So that's very useful, those tips. Uh, Beverly, you're an award-winning artist. You know, you were recently you recently um, were won an award for a painting that you drew to mark the hundredth anniversary of Balfour. Could you briefly tell us about that and wh where that painting now hangs? Well, that was that was really interesting because I had a I was actually talent spotted, and I, I have to tell you that about five years ago by a non-Jewish girl who was doing something on Chagall, and she wanted to know was there any Jewish artists in Britain doing anything. And she got into my website and then came and made an appointment to see me at my studio to buy prints. But she didn't want to buy prints. She brought a colleague and she looked at my work. And she said, well, why doesn't anybody know about this work? And I said, well, it's very difficult to get established. You know, um, and people in Britain weren't that interested in Jewish art. My work had then been concentrated very much on Britain. So she got me a gallery, a non-Jewish gallery, and didn't know anything about Judaism, but thought the artwork was good, and my work got launched. And that eventually got onto the internet. And then out of the blue, I got a phone call from Times of Israel saying, my editor has told me to come and see you. And this Jenny Fraser came and saw my work and looked at it and said, why isn't your work known? I said, well, it's not so easy. You know, you work in your little world and I didn't think people were that interested. I couldn't get out there. It's quite hard for a lonely artist to get out there. She said, I'm going to do something big for you. I'm going to do a two page spread on your work. And she did that and that went viral. It went everywhere. It went through the States. It went everywhere. And um, Israel picked it up. And they were looking for a British artist to tell the story of Balfour Declaration on the creation of Israel. And I was shortlisted and they asked me to come and present my work. Wow. The first interview was to present my work. So I arrived in Jerusalem to meet um, Rami Azari, who is the head of the Benali, uh, Jerusalem Benali. And for waiting for him for interview, it was so funny. I went to this building site because he was next to this building site and he wasn't about. And I was hanging around and the builders said to me, what are you doing? And I showed them my portfolio and they were so encouraging, gave me a lot of encouragement. Oh, this is fantastic. And how oh, I want you know. Anyway, eventually I had the interview and they said to me, well, we're going to shortlist you, but you have to come back with your presentation. So, um, I came back uh, a few months later with my ideas of how to tell the Balfour, Balfour Declaration and its link between Israel and Britain and tell that story. And uh, actually at the interview, they said to me, you've got the commission. Wow. So I didn't take any money for it because I thought it was such an honor to be able to do this. And also it was charity money and I didn't really want charity money. I felt it was a privilege. That piece of work became very, very successful. And it's now in permanently hung in Jerusalem because it was taken up by the municipality, the mayor of the municipality in Jerusalem has now hung it in his private quarters. It's not open to the public, but if the public want to see that picture, they can request uh, and they will be shown it in the That's municipality. That's amazing. That, that's just incredible. Let, let me share with everyone that painting. This is the painting. Um, can you see that on your screen, Beverly? Uh, and if you go on my website, it takes you visually around the story. Wow, amazing. So beverlyjanestewart.com. Guys, check it out. It's, it's, it's really worth taking a look. Beverly, one final question for you before we end. Tell me, how has, uh, how has your life been affected by COVID-19? What have you learned these past weeks? How are you guys managing? Very briefly. Um, I think that um, one of the things I've learned is we can communicate in lots of different ways. So I do work on my own a lot anyway, but the fact is that we can communicate in all sorts of ways and I think that's opened our, our interest. The other thing I found for our community in particular from your interviews, I have gained an insight into people I probably would never have spoken to. 
And I would look at people now in a very different way. And to me, that is an amazing achievement. I think it's brought out, not only has it brought the community together, it's brought more depth to the community. So you, know, you see people in shore, people meet with their own crowd, and you don't really know them. You, you, you see them, but you don't know them. And when people talk about their experiences and what they're doing and the richness that people's lives are, and we've all got richness in our lives. Um, I think you've hemmed in onto that and made our lives more interesting and richer. And I think that's a positive thing that has come out of this event. Thank you so much. I'm very complimented. I appreciate that. I wish you and Andrew good health. Thank and you. To you and your family and, and continue painting. And we look forward, to, I look forward to, a, to a tour of, the, of your studio once this is all over. Thank you. Just one small thing to say that I'm the only art, Jewish British artist part of the EU Festival of Culture in 2021. So to you. Continue in good health and thank well you, done to you. you. And thanks so much. All the very best. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ronnie.